You ever did any time behind bars? You know, most of the people I know have done, you know, some amount of time. Maybe a day or two, maybe a year, a few, but something, you know. And um, the one thing I'm going to tell you is that no matter how long you're in there, it's too long. You know, now the people who you, you did wrong might not feel like that, but you feel like that for sure. So tonight we have a man who spent time in a maximum security prison. And he was sentenced to 25 years for a murder he committed as a teenager. Now, while he was there, he ended up having a fight with another inmate that tried to attack him. And that inmate ended up dying. But now today he out. And he has a story to tell about a secret prison program that has scarred him for life. Now in prison, things can be normal. And you can come in there and you can just do your time, you know, play a little cards or something, you know, from time to time, you know, whatever. And folks who never been locked up, you know, you know, uh, everybody in jail, you know, it ain't like we just a bunch of animals and all that, man. You know, that ain't that ain't true, man. You know, yeah, yeah, it, it's some it's some cold blooded folk up in there, but you know, just because somebody kills somebody, uh, you know, that don't mean, you know, they just live in the kill, you know. They just was in that situation and reacted wrong. And now they paying for it. And you know, more guys in there, they have a stable mind. You know, yeah, it's some that, that dangerous and all that. But most of them just sit back and be normal. Now, even when a situation happened, the old heads, you know, they get together and make peace. You know, after so long, man. And folk don't usually get in trouble until somebody, you know, uh, gives somebody, a, you know, an IOU and they don't pay up. You know, besides that, man, mud just be chilling like like on the block, you know. And I ain't trying to justify nothing, you know. I ain't trying to justify nobody, you know, doing whatever they do. I'm just saying, I know some folk in jail that's smarter than uh, than, than, than any type booty boy on Wall Street. And I know some folk in jail that, that got more love in their heart than somebody's sweet old church-going grandma. You know, that's all I'm saying. They jump behind bars. Now, I went in as a teen, so I got tried, you know, like as an adult, because I was like, man, you know, down here in the South, boy, they, they brutal, boy. They, you know, they, they, they try you as an adult, bro, don't, you know, and, uh, you know, I guess so I was in there young with the big dogs, man, and, uh, and, you know, they be trying to take my stuff, man, trying to calm me out of Stuff every chance they could, all that. The only thing that saved me is uh, I doing time with my uncle. Now he wasn't no top top gangster or nothing, but you know, he had enough respect up in uh, you know, keep folk up, keep folk up off me for the most part. Now, but he did tell me, you know, put some muscle on, cause you know, in jail, you know, they move you around and stuff whenever they want to, and you know, he might not always be around the vouch for me. You know, so that's what I did, man. I spent all the time I could doing push up and pull ups and stuff. And, you know, I could do little, little dips and stuff. And I couldn't really get to the weights in the beginning because, you know, the big dog, they hog them all up during a little wreck time. But, you know, they get mad if you come over there messing up their routines and all that. But, you know, once I got pretty strong, man, you know, I can go over there with them and uh, clang and bang a little bit, you know. But, so, uh, I, you know, I started putting my, my little muscle on, you know. Now, when you spoil most folks, you know, they think twice before they mess with you. But every now and then, you know, just, you know, just, 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 yeah, just cause jail random, you know, jail, jail ain't, you know, life is random too, but jail random. <laughs> but the only difference is, you know, the folks you end up being random with is, is usually going to go toward violence first before they try to reason, you know, they're going to go to that violence first, man. You know, they got more frustration built up, man. You know, because you locked up and you can't enjoy your life, you know, the way you want to. Now, one day, the guy got transferred in and they put him in a room with me. And I, and I, and I slept on the bottom bunk because, cause, you know, I fell off the top one time back in the day, man, when I first got in. And I told myself, as soon as I got a chance to get me a bottom bunk, ain't no way I'm going to get up. 
So the guy come in the room, man. He just standing there looking at me, you know, looking around. He ain't say nothing. So I just looked at him for a little second, you know, see if he was going to say something. Then I just went back to what I was doing. So he finally said something. He said, um, can I have a bottom bunk? And, you know, I thought the guy was, was joking, you know, because, uh, you know, I would let, you know, the, the bottom bed would have my mind had all my stuff on it, man. So I laughed and, and, and I looked up and fate was completely serious. So I got up and said, you know, who you think you're talking to, man? You know, he just caught me on one of them bad days, man. You know, usually I keep calm, you know, and, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, it just caught me on one of them, you know, some days you just don't have good days, you know. And the guy, he must have got some bad advice, you know, from somebody before he got there. Because I know some people tell folk, you know, hey, as soon as you get in there, just fight whoever they put you in a room with so folks know that you're willing to fight and they won't mess with you. Only thing is, yeah. he picked, he picked, you know, he he should have he should did a little more scouting for it before he tried to fight, man. So I just hauled off and slapped him real quick, you know, pow, and real, it was real fast, you know, real fast, did respectful smack, and uh, I ain't even think twice about it, you know, just popped him, man, and uh, and somebody happened to be walking by, and they 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 they, they heard the smack, man, and they. All oh, they seen was just me smacked then, you know, him sitting there, you know, mugs in jail be bored, so that's all they need to see, man. So that thing, you know, folk run around talking about I just smacked the new guy, he ain't do nothing. Then next thing, you know, folk talking about he crying and all kind of stuff. So, you know, then now folks showing up at the cell, messing with him, trying to jig him out of his stuff. You know, trying to get the uh um, you know, they, they come trying to play him out of his little blanket and, and socks and stuff, man, and all that, taking his lunch trays and all that. So he, um, you know, he turned around, he started blaming me, saying, you know, I ain't have to go and tell everybody about what happened. And I ain't said a word to nobody about it, man. You know, to me, it wasn't no big deal. Like, he tried me, I smacked him, you know. That's it, man. Folk didn't get, you know, folk didn't get killed for less than that. I just smacked him, you know. Cause I'm, you know, I, I was bigger than him, so like, you know, what I get for, you know, I'm trying to look, I'm trying to do my time and get up out of here. I don't learn, you know, I don't learn. He just caught me on a bad day, like I say, and I know some of y'all say, you know, oh, y'all, you killed me, you killed me. So, but look, I know this ain't, you know, it, 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 it ain't. I was young, man. I was young. And you know, and when you and when you got that music in your ear, and you got these folk in your ear all the time, man. You got all these folk always always telling you, oh, um, you know, oh man, don't 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 nobody try me, bro. Don't nobody man, that, that why so much stuff happened in the street, cause cause it's this whole ain't nobody gonna try me attitude, man. Everything at work. Oh, bro, he just tried me. Ain't nobody trying me, bro. At school, oh, she just, he just tried me. She just tried me. Principal just tried me. Teachers try Everything, everything, everywhere you go, it's all about you just tried me. Man, that, that's, that, 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 that little sentence right there come before so much messed up stuff in the streets, man. And uh, that's how you get raised. You get raised, you... Your mama, your mama fit like that. Your daddy like that. That you learn to be like that, or they teach you to be like that. Grandma like that. Everybody you know just ain't gonna try me. All the music you listen to about folk trying, and what you gonna do when folk try you. So, what happened is that day come when somebody try you, and you happen to have access to a weapon. You 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 just don't understand that what you doing. In that one little second, man, you don't understand how that one little second finna change the whole rest of your life. So I know that it's hard for some folk to swallow, but that just is what it is, man. And instead of, and instead of you know jumping down on the on, on the young boy that make that mistake, all I'm saying is, just be glad it wasn't you. Yeah, all I'm saying, all I'm saying, like, it could have been you. That's yeah, all I'm saying. Just be glad it wasn't you. You know, be glad it wasn't you and your family. Be glad that 
you know, if you got out the street or were never in the street in the first place, then, you know, you'd be glad that you never was and never will be and your kids, you know. So don't don't just don't just look down because we made some mistake because you got some mistake, too. <laughs> but anyway, you know, I'm sorry for preaching, man. It just, you know, this junk, it, it didn't. It didn't change me, man. So let me, let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all, you know, what happened next, cause this way everything, you know, got turned upside down, man. And uh, this way everything went wrong. So somehow he went and got a hand on the shank, man. I don't know how, and I don't know how he got it that quick. You know, I don't know who could have hooked him up that fast. That man just. Like, it hadn't even been a week, man. But he even got his hands on one and hid it until the nighttime come and was planning on just me, you know, killing me, man. You know, he was already doing life, so he ain't care at all, you know, just, you know, just gonna spend some time in a hole or whatever. That's all that happened. You know, so I'm gonna fall, like, man, shoot, I'm already doing life. I ain't getting out of here. So he waited till nighttime. And now look, man, the guy jumped down from the bed. But, you know, he probably was kind of, you know, probably kind of nervous, you know. And, uh, you know, because, you know, when you got your mind made up to, to hurt somebody, to kill somebody, especially, you know. So he, he probably had a mind kind of messed up and he, he got wrapped up in the sheets. And he fell down from the top bunk. And when he fell, he woke me up. So I popped up. And try to look around and find out what that noise was. And uh, all I seen was he was on the floor. And he bust his head on the toilet. And blood was everywhere, man. And when I rolled him over, like I went to him and and, and kind of and kind of grabbed him and turned him so I could, you know, look at him and see if his eyes was open or whatever. And I seen the shape, you know, sticking like in his little, like lower neck area. So... I ain't know what was going on, man, you know. And he just looking at me, breathing real hard and fast, man, like, <laughs> like that, man. And I called for God. And they came by and they immediately, like, threw me against the wall and took me down and pepper sprayed me and they cuffed me and all that, man. And, uh, you know, I couldn't see, cause my, you know, I'm pepper sprayed, but I could still hear him next to me dying, man. And he was trying to scream and get some words out, but I guess the blood must have been up in the way. So I got put up in a hole, man, and I tried to plead my case, man, but the the rumor of me slapping him had already got around the whole the prayer. Even the guards heard about me slapped him, man. So folks soon, you know, I was just trying to bully him and he fought back. So I messed around and killed him and they figured, you know, the shank couldn't have been here because he only been in there for you know, a couple of days. How he get connected enough to get his hand on the shank? So I'd never been in the hole before, man. So I, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. I lost track of time, like real quick, man. You know, I couldn't even remember what day it was when I went in, man. Like that just was messing with my head, bro. Now the worst thing about it, man, is having to start this whole prison thing over, man. You know, you like you've been in prison all this time. Now you getting ready to have to start over, man. Just knowing I'm finna be, you know, tried with a murder, man. And I only had like five years left on my sentence. You know, I was like so close to getting out. Well, I had like five years, you know, before I could like do that. Uh, I can't think of the word. Uh, you know, do that. Go, you know, go for parole or whatever. You know, go before the little parole folk, man. And I was so close, man. And uh. And the guard came to get me, and I'm already, you know, sitting there waiting on him because I was just waiting on that moment, man. And, and the room they came and took me to had a guy sitting there with a smile on his face. You know, a white guy, man. And he said he was going to keep it simple. You know, and um, it's, uh, and the only way I can get, you know, the only way I can get out of this out of this murder was, uh, you know, I had to have a lawyer that only a millionaire could afford, you know, to beat that case, man. And he said, you know, he was going to offer me something that only a fool would refuse. Now, he said I'd get out early and beat the murder case if I agreed to take part in this new program. He said I'd get a little money, too, once I got released. 
you know, just get me on my feet. And I'm thirsty to say, yeah, but, you know, I asked first, could he clear my record, too? Because, you know, even if he give me some money, I don't know how much money he's talking about giving me, but that money going to run out. And, uh, you know, when you got this stuff on your record, bro, you, you can't get no another job, man. It's hard to get a job when you done, done, you know, time in prison for murder, bro. Like, you know, who going to take the risk in hiring you? So, <laughs> you know. Who, who, who gonna want to cut? Who gonna, what customer gonna want to get served by a guy that killed somebody? You know, so uh, you know, I, I was gonna say, okay, you clear my record, you know, I, 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 we do it. So he said, yeah, he get my record clear, and he just kept smiling. So I was happy to sign a little paperwork he had, man. I couldn't understand none of it, you know, but he told me that once he left the room. The deal was off the table, so sign right now or, you know, too bad. So I signed that mug real quick, and that thing I know, the guards, they all in there, but the guards was looking crazy, man. They had this look on their face like, like, just looked like they was real nervous. Like, now the guards, they took me to an area of the prison where everything looked like, like it was new, and it was like underground, too. And they took me to the room that they had, and they undressed me completely, man. And uh, then they strapped some chains around me, and they tied me up to this thing. They had me standing, like standing up, you know, I was like, like kind of up like this. And they had chains and stuff around me, and then it was chains hanging off of me and stuff. And uh, then somebody said, bring them in. Now they brought in, it was like a bag, looked like a body bag, man. So I started freaking out in my mind, cause, you know, I knew it, like, I'm like, bro, this, man, bro, I'm, this is mad, man. I got, I got a big head, bro. So, you know, y'all gotta give, you know, y'all gotta get a bigger ski mad next time, cause, you know, I, I got, a, I, I ain't got no head, boy. I got a cranium, boy. <laughs> you know, so, I've been passed up a head, boy. You know. My head's so dang big, uh, you know, I don't even, I don't have dreams, bro. I had movies, you know, I had full-blown, hour and 30-minute movies I had when I sleep, bro. That's how big my head, but anyway, bro, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, they opened up the bed, and it was my cellmate, and, you know, he was dead, of course, and he just had that weird look on him, you know how, like, how when you see somebody dead, but they ain't really like being cared for, and they just kind of look bad, like they look like them, but they don't look like them at the same time. You know, that's kind of how he looked, man. And, uh, you know, he looked like himself, but he didn't look like himself. And they had him, you know, stripped, and had him strapped with the same chains they had around me. Now they put him up, like I'm up like this, and they put him up like this behind me, bro. And, you know, had him facing the same way I'm facing, you know, so, but he behind me, though. And, uh, and I, I tried my best just to, to squirm and get away, but I couldn't talk. I, I was so jacked up, I couldn't get no words out. You know, all I could do is just try, you know, I don't, I'm going to breathe and, like, I was jacked up, man, because this, you know, I'm trying to figure out what they doing, man. Now, the worst part of this whole thing, there's some bad parts, but the one that really I could still feel is when they put his body up against mine. I, it's so weird when you feel a human being that dang cold, man. Bro, that man felt like, it felt like they put a piece of ice on my, like I like, felt like I was just laying on, it, it, it's, it's a feeling that it, it make me just say chill out of my spine just just thinking about it now and uh they put them behind me and they then they took them chains and they strapped them and they strapped them up behind me and they strapped them real tight so when when his arm was on my arms so when I moved my arms it moved his arms and his head was laying like right on my shoulder, like kind of, I could see like the top of his head off, like laying on my shoulder. He was right up against me, man. 
And then they they set me free from the thing that was holding me. And they all left and left me in this room with him. So now, bro, I'm I'm freaking out. I'm trying all I can to get some space between me and him. And I, and I, I couldn't, bro. I was trying. His blood was still, he was still bleeding, bro. Like, they hadn't even drained this man's blood, bro. He was still bleeding on me. And, and uh... And at the time, like, my, my, all my senses weren't working. Every, the only sense that was working was feel. I couldn't smell. I couldn't, you know, I don't think, like, I could taste. I just could, like, I, I almost couldn't see, bro. Like, I could just feel him up against me. And I ain't been around no dead bodies, you know, like. So, you know, I ain't really... I've never been to no funeral. Like, I've been to funerals when I was little, but I've been locked up, man. So, you know, I ain't been around no funeral. You know, just, look, I, I don't think nobody would have been able to stand this, bro. I don't think there's nobody who would be able to. Maybe if you knew it was finna happen and you didn't prepare yourself for it, but. Nah. And, uh, and, 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 so, the time went by. And like, again, I'm in, like, solitary, so I don't know how much time went by. But I know time going by. And I can't go to sleep. I, I just couldn't. I just couldn't go to sleep. And I don't know how much time going by. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, you could read or you could... They weren't feeding me. I felt like I should have been fed by now, or, you know, water or something. Then they gave me food eventually. Like, it felt like it had to be two or three days. You know, that's how my, but my stomach never growled, you know. I never was hungry, but I was just, you trying to use the food as a track of time to tell me how much time it went by, you know. But, uh. I got the food and I, 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 I ate it, but I didn't taste nothing. I drank the water. It didn't. It wasn't refreshing. Like it was, it was nothing. And then I was waiting again for food. You know, just trying to keep track of how long it's been. And it felt like another two or three days before I got food. But before that two or three days hit. I started to smell him. I started to taste him. Taste the the blood, the the the, the rot, the the uh, and it and, and I ain't had no towel now. I couldn't wipe the blood off me. I couldn't I did all I could to wipe it off with my hand, but it ain't the same, man. You can't you just can't you can move it around and move it off you, but you can't wipe it. And it started getting hard and crusty on me. And his blood was in my fingernail. And now I didn't want to, when the food came, I ain't want to even touch the food with my hands, with his blood and stuff on my hand. And uh, his skin, he was turning blue. Like, he was getting, he was getting this blue-gray color started coming to him, man. This man was rotting. This man was rotting. He was starting to rot on my back. Like, he was turning to, to nothing on my back, man. And I don't know. I've never seen flies in prison. I think they let them in there on purpose, man. I think they purposely let some flies in. Bro, I started seeing flies buzzing, bro. Maggots. Flies and... And, and 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 I'm carrying every move I make. He right there with me. Every move I make, he right there with me. He he with me every step of the way, bro. Every every second of man on my shoulder, bro. And then he started talking to me. He started talking. He started raising his head up and talking to me. You know, telling me little stuff. Uh, and it, it wasn't making no sense what he was saying at first, but he started telling me little stuff, and I I would try to. 
ignore him for a while, but he just would keep on, would keep on, would keep on until I finally pay him attention. I tell him, shut up. I tell him, shut up, man. Get off my back, you know. Leave me alone. Get off my back. He just keep on talking to me. He just keep on. So, uh, I could feel his skin starting to get, uh, his skin just started getting, he started getting stiff, man. He started getting, uh, I had to, to, for me to move, I had to, to break him to move. I had to break, tear him, I had to tear his bones and muscle just for me to move. Bro. Just for me to move, you know, and, and his head was stuck. I couldn't even move my head, man, I could, cause his head all up on my shoulder, bro. And I started getting sick, man. I, the, that the stuff from him, the the toxic from him, the 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 the, the, the death from him, man, was starting to get. It was getting on me. I was like, I felt like my skin was just covered in in black, just black. I don't even know what to call this stuff. Just it was just like rot, just black rot was just. Puss, blood, fluids was on me. And uh, I started getting sick, man. I was, I was getting sick, man. I was getting sick, bro. And they would come, and I could, you know, I, I don't know how many days going by. I don't know if it's all in one day. Like, when I think back on that, them details like that, I, I can't get you, bro. I can't give you them details, but I can tell you that they came in and they had, they be covered in like, you know, them suits, man, covered in head to toe, like in them, you know, them, 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 uh, them hazard suits or whatever you call them, man. They cover head to toe and they come in there and, uh, and, uh, when I, you know, I'd be so weak, man, I'd be half, like half sleep and they'd give me a little shot. I don't know if it was penicillin or something. It's like they wanted me to, they didn't want me to die. They wanted me to keep, to keep, keep going, bro. And like, I really think that they was, because when they shoot me, I feel a little better, man. So they would give me something to make me feel better so I could suffer. Now, I, you know, I kind of done a little research. So I know bodies decompose at, you know, it take a little time, you know. So it, I, I, I guess... So, it, I, you know, if it, it felt like I couldn't, like, I can't tell, it didn't, it just felt like time wasn't even important no more, like, no longer was, like, like, you know, no, it, it felt like it was no longer than, than a couple of days, a couple of hours, but time wasn't important, like, yeah, time didn't exist. It was just, it was just me and this body, man. Me and that man that, that then got me in trouble for murder, that then killed himself. Trying to kill me over, over a bunk bed. And, uh, they, they, so based on him, like the way he was decomposing, I guess that it, it had been a couple of weeks or something, man. You know, some time was, it been a little time, you know, some time was going by. And, uh, they would keep coming in there and giving me them shots and trying to keep my vitals up and trying to, you know, they wouldn't let me die. They let me get sick, sick as a dog, bro. And in the toilet, I ain't had no toilet, bro. I ain't had nowhere to go use the bathroom. I had a corner. I had a, a corner, and it, it ain't no corner that 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 
it was a corner with a little hole in it, and that was my toilet. His his death, man, his rock was was getting into my pores, into my skin, man. I would try to shut my ears and cover them out. You know, I would try to just whatever I could to close. I would try to close. But he was still getting in, bro. At a point, they opened up the door. And when they opened up the door, they all came in wearing their suits. And and he he was on my shoulder and he was he was like black. He was he he was he he was he was he was, he was trying to talk to me. All that time he had been trying to talk to me, just sitting on my shoulder trying to trying to talk to me. And it wasn't until they came in there and they started taking them chains off that I finally heard what he was trying to say. And all he was saying was. Don't carry, don't carry that dead weight. Don't carry that dead weight. <laughs> don't, don't go to jail. Whatever you doing, if it's something that can send you to jail, don't do it. Now me, I only done, you know, I only done about a day or two. But that little day or two I did was enough to make sure I ain't never going back. But to be somebody that went through with somebody like he went through, You don't want to live with those kind of scars. You don't want to live with them type of scars.